Hello, my fellow Ruby and Rails enthusiasts. There were a lot of new things that happened in the AI world this week, and I'm going to cover a couple of them in this video. First thing I'm going to cover is the new Google Anti-Gravity AI IDE. This looks really promising, and it's going to give IDEs like Cursor and Windsurf a run for their money. Um, it looks like it's just another fork of VS Code. However, with the relationship between Google and Windsurf, or at least the intellectual property relationship, um, I'm guessing it has some Windsurf sprinkled into it too. The editor is available on Linux, Mac, and Windows. And as of this, as of this time, it's actually free of charge. And it includes the models Gemini 3 Pro, Claude Sonnet 4.5, and GPT OSS. Which brings me to the next thing I'm going to be covering today, and that's Gemini 3 Pro the new model from Google. This model has been getting a lot of attention and specifically for its capabilities in AI coding. And you can see here, according to the benchmarks in the coding model, it claims to be significantly better than Claude 4.5 Sonnet and of course, better than the old Gemini 2.5. But of course, I'm not gonna take their word for it. Today, I'll be doing a comparison between Gemini 3 Pro and Claude Sonnet 4.5 using anti-gravity. So let's get started. Today I'll be generating an application to generate invoices and to track invoices. I've already set the project up as a Rails 8.1.1 project with Rails authentication. At first glance, anti-gravity looks like Cursor or VS Code or Windsurf, but don't let the looks fool you. It actually really has some very cool and unique features. I will be demonstrating some of these features as I build out this application. Anti-gravity claims to glean and store knowledge as we do our work. And so I'm going to be leaning on that rather than adding rules or any context documentation. Starting with Gemini 3 Pro, I've already primed the context by asking it to give me a summary about the project. And it did just fine. It's a Rails 8.1 application and it came up with the features that it has, including the authentication. Like the other popular IDEs, Anti-gravity has the ability to be in a planning mode or a fast mode where it'll skip the planning process. It suggests doing the planning for more complex tasks and for simpler tasks, just going straight into the fast mode. For this first prompt, I'm gonna put it in planning mode and you can see here, I've chosen Gemini 3 Pro I. So let's jump right in with our first prompt. As you can see here, it created this task list and now it's going through and checking off the tasks as it goes. Again, this is similar to uh, the benefits we get in Cursor. One of the cool features of anti-gravity is as you can see here, it can control your browser. This is anti-gravity going to the login page and filling out the form and submitting it in order to test our notifications. Another real cool feature uh, that anti-gravity offers, a walkthrough page. So it offers a walkthrough for each of the tasks that it takes care of, and it includes actual recordings of what it did in the browser. So let's take a look at this walkthrough. You can see that it's saying it's verifying our task, which is spa enhancements, gives us a list of the changes it made, and then the verification steps. This is for the toast notification. And you can see here that it actually recorded itself using the browser with the browser integration and verified that the messages were getting are correct. And then it went through and created our modal dialog code and just verified it by a code review. So I'm going to point out its first mistake. It's saying it verified that our toast notification is working, but it isn't actually working. This is the traditional message that we're getting back on Rails. And I think I know why that is looking through its code. You can see it made the same mistake that a lot of models make, and it's trying to register our stimulus controllers when with Rails, uh, but it has the ability to eager load all controllers just based off their name from the controllers directory. So I'm going to go ahead and reverse this change. So now I'm going to give it this prompt, letting it know that I made the change, and then I'm going to ask it to re-record this in the browser. 
As you can see here, we're recording in the browser again. And once again, this is all the IDE doing this, and you see our toaster now popped up as expected. Now I'm going to submit a one-shot prompt, and we're going to see how anti-gravity does generating an application. You can see here, it's again, going through all of the tasks and checking them off. And at this point, it's actually setting up a gem. It's gonna install Prawn um, gem, and it's, it's in the process of doing that now. Now it's finished implementing the PDF download of the invoice, and it's moving on to the status workflow. And now it is going to open up our browser and start testing this. Okay, it looks like it is done, and it did the walkthrough here in the browser and fixed some errors along the way, which I think is pretty cool. So let's take a quick look at the updates to our walkthrough. You can see here line item two, which is our new invoicing workflow. And you can see it kind of outlines what the success criteria is and some screenshots from the process. And then finally, a screen recording that walks through the entire workflow. So let's take a quick walk through the final product. And so I'm landed on my dashboard here and then I can filter the different invoices that you see here. So pretty simple user interface. Honestly, it's obviously it's not very pretty. So I'd have to go back and do some changes there, but it does appear to be working. Um, I'm gonna come over here to this invoice and I'm gonna see the project and the customer that were created as part of the walkthrough. And then I can download the PDF and you can see here's the PDF which looks decent enough. And let's go back to our project. In our new project, we can create a new invoice here. And again, not exactly pretty, but functional. And here's our customer, and we can edit our customer. And again, very simple form. Back to customers, and here's our two customers. So that is it for Anti-Gravity and Gemini 3 Pro. Okay, now we're moving on to Claude Sonnet 4.5, and I'm gonna do the thinking model. And I've got it in planning mode at this point in anti-gravity, and I've primed the context, just asking it to review the um, project and give me a brief summary. And it also did a good job on this model. I would say it's actually a little bit more thorough than Gemini was, but both of them are just fine. Now we're gonna give it the same first prompt that we gave Gemini, and let's see how it does. I'm going to take a second here and show you one of the most powerful features about anti-gravity and that is this agent manager which you can access here as i pop this up you can see this is just a different view of the same thing you can see it's also live and it is showing us all the files that are being updated and it's showing us our conversation as it goes on some of the things you can do here though are extremely powerful. If you look, look over here on the left-hand side, I can open up this sidebar and you can see I have workspaces here. So this is just one project, the Tally project. I also have another project that I've worked on a little bit here and it's called Help You Rent. And I can start agents as many as I want on each of these projects and have them all running simultaneously. So that's pretty cool. It's, a, it's an agent manager and it helps you with that. And also, as I mentioned earlier, this is where you would find the knowledge that is built up as you use the tool. At this point, it hasn't stored any knowledge. Something else you can see here, if I open up this right panel, you can see that it shows me the files that have been changed or updated. And then it shows me the implementation plan that I can look at and the task list that I can look at. So again, this is just a different view, kind of of the same thing, but it gives you that powerful capability of running multiple agents. You can see it's created our task list here. And this is just creating the toast notification and the uh, modal dialog. Okay, it looks like it is done coding and now it's running through some recordings and it looks like it's finished recording. Let's see what it has to say. So rather than looking through that in the editor, I'm gonna open up the agent manager and take a look at some of these artifacts. You can see on the inbox, it has our last request here from the agent. And this is our walkthrough. And you can see it's gone through and kind of created some code, show some code examples. 
that it generated. And then we have, it looks like a screenshot. This is actually a video of it. So it has a screenshot and then, um, and it's got a screenshot of the toast notification, which I think is really cool. And it's got a video of it showing up. So that's cool. Um, that's in the password reset, and this is the sign in. You see a screenshot, and then I assume this is going to be a video showing us the toast notification here. So, anyway, that's the walkthrough. Okay, now we're going to feed it the big application generation prompt, and let's see how it does. And it has created our plan here. So it's done a really good job of that. You can see it even uses color here to emphasize things. And it's given us a little bit of an architectural overview. Seems like it's actually doing a better job with Sonnet than it did with Gemini, which kind of surprises me since it's a Google product. Okay, now it's finished with the Sonnet version and it is moving on to the testing stage. So let's see if it can test and fix errors as it goes. Each time it, get, time it gets an error like this, it will actually take a screenshot of the error so that you don't have to do that and you don't have to copy and paste errors and put them in the conversation. So it thinks it fixed the error and let's see if it gets through it this time. So here's the final result of my invoice generation application tally using Claude Sonnet. You can see that it allows me to create customers, it allows me to create new projects, and it allows me to create new invoices, as well as change the status of the invoices. So it's exactly what I asked for in the requirements. Overall, it's clear that this application looks a lot better than the Gemini 3 version did. And I would also say that it functions better too. Gemini 3 was a pretty basic implementation that missed out on a few of the requirements. I do think, however, that the biggest miss for Gemini 3 Pro is the user interface. It just didn't look that great. I think the backend code was pretty good. So in the future, I can see myself using Gemini for what it's good for, which is more backend type of code and just general like bug fixing and using Sonnet 4.5, which as you all know is my favorite uh, model, using that for UI generation and for generating new projects. I also want to mention that I haven't tried using Gemini 3 Pro on TypeScript or JavaScript projects or Python projects. So my tests are purely on Ruby on Rails, which of course is what my focus is. So it might do a better job on different programming languages and different programming technologies. As far as anti-gravity goes, I'm going to give it more time. It's free now, so I'm just going to go ahead and use it and try to get more used to it. My initial impressions are it has a lot of capabilities with its web integration and also with its agent manager capabilities. I haven't really scratched the surface on that yet, so I want to play around with that a little bit more. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give me a like. And also, if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.